Hey everybody, this is Dark Arrest, and we're back. So I ended up spending literally all morning working on the game here. So the last three videos I uploaded just showed little bit, bitty pieces. We didn't get much going. We still don't really have a huge amount going for it anyways. Uh, but we do have something now. There's something that resembles a game as I can actually go ahead and scroll out here. Uh, we now have a tank. The tank now has a turret. Now you may be wondering, like, why does a tank have three barrels? It actually has more than that, but because it's 2D, you can only see the, uh, the barrels here. This is actually a quad-barreled cannon and a twin-barreled machine gun. The game we're end up making is not going to follow standard convention of what a tank is and how it behaves. We're going to be using a lot more sci-fi style vehicles, a lot more... Um, exotic looking stuff to give the game its own unique fill and to give us a much higher rate of fire in actual DACA ability from these vehicles. Uh, we'll be mixing that in with a whole bunch of other types of weapons like lasers, missile packs, everything else. But we now actually do have something going. Uh, since the last video there was quite a few changes, I actually did end up fixing a lot of the graphical problems. The how it was saying that using the tile map was easy and I was happy that Unity had these amazing tools in there. I kind of regret saying that because the tile map system they have in here kind of sucks a little bit. Um, it works. It's a very easy to use map system. It allows you to paint, allows you to, to do everything else, but it actually lacks uh, quite a few notable things that should have been implemented from the very start. Uh, the first major thing that I'm excited to go do a lot of reading to go figure this out. Um, nobody really had a clear answer, everybody had a different way of saying it. So people were like, okay, if you're having this problem, you need to turn your anti-aliasing off. Um, which I did. That didn't fix anything. Um, I didn't find another article saying, well, you want to make sure the anti-aliasing is still on. Flipping it back on, of course, didn't help at all. I'm probably never going to flip it back on until I actually need it. Um, then there's people saying, okay, you have to do this with your textures, you have to do that with your textures, you have to splice them a certain way, you have to cut them a certain way, you have to make sure you have these render settings on, you have to make sure your camera's set up a certain way. A lot of stuff that was said that had to be done. And the only thing I ended up figuring out that actually did work was the first step is that I ended up actually making a material. Uh, I read a few people that were talking about this. So I made a material that has to have pixel snap on. This does help to some extent. It removes some of the problems, so it removes the issue where you can see black lines in, in between it or blue lines or whatever. Um, those are being caused by the fact that when you have these tiles, there is a space between these. Um, and if the tile does not snap to the edge just right, it will allow the player to see through those. And if you're moving around and then stopping and the camera has to, or the game has to readjust the map and re-render it, you will get those gaps between this. Uh, this has to do with what I think, how the render system works for this. It's rendering each individual tile as an individual mesh and the meshes are not completely lined up or some kind of BS like that because the reality is I actually don't know how this works and I may actually go dig the code up of the old original version and read through it because I don't think they've changed the code too much. And this used to be um, a plugin you downloaded separately from Unity, now it's actually part of Unity built into it. Uh, the other thing that ended up fixing this, and I'm kind of, uh, I need to thank a few other videos. I got the video links um, bookmarked somewhere. I'm not going to probably put them in here, but you'll find them probably. Uh, is that I had to go redo my entire texture sheet. So we go find the tiles. So I got my texture sheet here. Uh, let's actually open this up. It should open up GIMP. Hopefully the video player doesn't freeze. GIMP has a very high tendency of freezing my computer when it loads. I had to redo my tiles. Now my tiles are originally 64 by 64. The reason for doing a 64 by 64 is I do want a high amount of detail out of this game uh, because that's about the only way I'm going to be able to make something look good because I'm not that good at doing uh, pixel art. Um, so we got these here and I had to spend a, quite a bit of time doing this. So let me not move that. Um, is there a way to just, uh, yeah, I can move this up this way. So I had to take these, uh, I had to make them and extend them by two pixels on all edges. This was recommended by quite a few people and I found a really nice video that just showed how to do this and talked about all the different uh, things and actually went through that. Let me see if I can find that video because I actually do keep a bookmark of all the articles I use and I recommend whoever, if you guys are working on your own games and stuff, keep a folder put everything in the folder you will ever use to make your game because at some point you're going to need to remember how you fix something or how something did that and I've got tons of links in here and one of these I think is a YouTube video that I did use Doo -doo -doo. some of these I did use and some of these I actually didn't use Dude, I can't actually see which one it is I may have not bookmarked it which is really unfortunate because it was a really good tutorial it's a painting tile tutorial from Unity. It's not in there. 
Uh, that's really sad. But uh, it was one of the guys, uh, he was making his own game, he was running the issues, and the only way he found to make it work was to extend the pixels out by a couple on each side. And this does work. It's really tedious, it's really painful, because it means I am wasting a ton of texture space. Although I got a ton of textures, like I can go that way and that way. I'm probably not going to fill this entire sheet up by the time I'm done. Plus I can just make another sheet. Um, it's not that big of a deal. But the big tedious part about it is I do have to actually extend all these out. So every time I make a texture, so something even as simple as just making red lines, which I'm using for the borders and stuff at the moment, until I actually come in here and paint some proper ones for here. I got to extend off the edge a little bit. And the reason for this is that this will actually... Because uh, the, the issue I was running into separate from this pixel snap. So pixel snap fixed the issue where we were having gaps between our tiles. Once you fix the pixel snap issue, then you have another issue called bleeding. Bleeding is where when Unity is rendering and it gets a little bit of precision error, it will borrow pixels from the adjacent tile around it. So if we actually go back to Unity really quickly here, um, and we actually find my tile, actually, well, you don't even need the power pot, we can go to here. If we go to my sprite editor, so this is how the sprite editor actually divides things up. And you can see the same type of grid line I'm using over there in uh, GIMP here, if I can find GIMP again. It's the same type of grid line I'm using up here. This doesn't actually transfer over Unity, I have to redo this in Unity. Uh, but you get this grid line. This is the tile. So I run the tile in the game, this is how it would render as and actually show up and everything else. Is what's inside this blue line, and you go to each one in the blue line. So when Unity uh, needs to render this just slightly bigger or slightly smaller or something, it will borrow pixels from the adjacent tile. Usually about one pixel is what it'll borrow. I put two just for safety. So it'll borrow those ones now, and it will look the same as the previous texture. So I won't have this problem of bleed over. I will have issues where it may not look very, very good when you zoom in, but to be honest, if we actually go out of this real quick, and uh, we go to the game view and zoom in, you zoom in this game does not look very good when it's zoomed in i have a lot of things to fix when it comes to just graphics by themselves because we go to the scene view and we know we can zoom in on the scene view and it looks really really good and you zoom in on the game view and it looks like crap i mean you even get this over here i have no clue what's going on with that i think it's definitely the camera because this is what the camera is supposed to look like and when you're zoomed out like this and we see if we can get to the same zoom level about from the scene view you really don't notice the difference between the two of those, and I think it's intentional. It is meant to kind of... It's what the camera's supposed to do. It's meant to look like this, and I think there are ways to fix it. I doubt we're ever going to zoom in or anything else, but mm, I don't know. Maybe in the future we'll add some cinematic abilities. Because I do want to do some um, minor cinematics, like where you have a boss show up, the camera will pan over, show you the boss in detail, then pan back out and let you fight the boss. Just because it would be cool. Not because there's any real reason to do it. Um, but beyond all talking about that, so we got the tile map working. I had to rework the tile set repeatedly. So you see, I have a whole bunch of pink tiles in here now. So what was happening as I added new tiles and I was regenerating them every single time, it was resetting my tile palette over here. So the tile palette was not staying consistent and, uh, I don't know what's just happening here. I think I broke my tile palette, which would be really sad because this is a pain that I'm about to work with. What in the world? That is very strange. My tile palette disappeared on me. But, like, if we had the tile palette, every time I was regenerating it, the tile palette over here would regenerate with it. And it had to do with the fact that every time we splice this, it renames all the tiles. All the tiles get renamed over and over and over again. And it changes what names they are because of the order of splicing. So if we actually open this back up, uh, get to the inspector here and go to sprite editor you see that it actually splices them in certain order i had left these empty on the background so what it would do is it go okay we have a tile here 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 there's nothing here nothing here nothing here nothing here nothing here and they keep going down so this would be my third tile that'll be the fourth that'll be the fifth this would be my sixth and it would go seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so on and so on as it went through the thing. So this would change the name of my, my tiles because I wasn't naming them because I wasn't manually making the tiles. I was letting the automated system splice, which is up here. You can, uh, well, I wasn't using automate. I actually was using splice by grid. But when doing that, it renamed the tiles because there's no consistent name. And if you wanted to keep a consistent name, you had to go through here and name these, which I do plan to name these eventually. Um, and then do that just so that way the tile palette wouldn't reset because the tile palette's looking for these ground assets down here which then correlate to an actual tile object, which then has your texture in it and everything else. 
So you uh, will do all that stuff, which is weird. It's still weird. I don't know why it's not showing up over here. Oh, wait, you know, maybe I have to select a uh, tile map with this hierarchy. Nope, still not working. Oh, well. So I can't show off all the tile map stuff and how you would do with that. Anyway, so we got all that fixed. Uh, the way I fixed that was just by going ahead and basically backfilling the entire thing with pink. So that way it spliced the entire thing. And then I don't have to worry about the tiles resetting. So I make a new tile, then that tile becomes ground tile 3 and 4 and so on and so on. Which doesn't bother me too bad with them having that name because I'm never going to actually look at the name part. I'm only going to be touching the tile map over here and then I'm going to be messing with the tiles themselves which all the tiles are stored in the objects folder here. So if you actually go find it. Which should be stored in here which they're not. Really weird that this is like bugged out on me. Let me refresh on it. Oh well. Beyond that, because that's only like the, all the minor stuff, the cool stuff we're getting getting to is that I actually have the tank running a lot better now. Let's actually hit play on here. We actually have a rotating turn now. This does follow the mouse. It does have a delay. So if you actually move your mouse over here, it will not catch up right away. So we do have delay on that. The delay is controllable by script. So we can actually go into if we can find the tank right down here. And all the stuff is set up in an object-based system. So we have the turret, the tank, the turret, the cannon, which the cannon is a weapon, has a mouse fire script on it. The guns are just individual firing points on this. Let's actually get out of the game view so I can show this off better. Scroll all the way down. And, like, none of the overlays are working. Like, it's like half the gizmos broke on me. I think it's just because I left Unity running all night. So we got the weapon script, mouse fire script, and we have the gun scripts. The gun scripts should be, like, lighting up on the uh, turrets here, which they're not. Let me try switching. Ah, here we go. You have to switch to that movement mode. So we have the gun script, which show the barrel. So this will actually rotate with the turret. So if I actually rotate the turret, which we have to rotate in the Z axis, is how this works. Uh, this will actually rotate with it. So we go back down the guns. And they rotate with it. it. Saves me a lot of time. Could just spawn the bullets off here. We can even use the rotation of the gun points. Machine guns built the same way. Weapon script, uh, firing script. This one is left click. This one is set to right click. Same script for both of them. Really reusable. I will be making these, of course, also to uh, work with Xbox controllers in the future as well. Right now, I'm just going to focus on getting keyboard and mouse working because then later I can come back. And these are actually built to work with left and right or fire one, fire two. So I think those correlate to left and right trigger on most remotes anyway. So I don't think I have to do anything to change it, but I don't have an Xbox remote on my desk at the moment. But the machine gun, it has its uh, little gun port as well. The point uh, plan is, by the way, to actually alternate between these two right here, which will be creating custom scripts for that in the future to alternate between them because there's supposed to be four barrels here, two barrels here. And uh, so, we want them to fire at a certain rate and actually end up alternating between them, but that's not code's not in there at the moment right now. The code pretty much, if I can drag it over here, because as I said, I don't care what you guys see of the code. The fire script, pretty simple. If left fire, fire one, left fire, fire two, fire weapon. We just add the weapon to the thing. The weapon's pretty simple as well. This is your standard spawn code you will see. So you've got reload timer, reload timer goes. If reload timer is not going, we minus delta time. So we actually are tracking reload time in actual seconds of the game. So if you get a lag spike or whatever, it doesn't really bother it. Your reload time is exactly the same. Um, and then we're spawning the bullet. We're telling it to ignore our own body so we don't shoot ourselves. We're adding some force to it. We, this, we are using the physics system for this. This one took a little bit of time to get to work. This is why I don't like the physics system because I have to put a large number, like a thousand into it to get it to work. And I may end up actually like pre-setting this by a thousand and then putting a smaller number in here like one so that way i don't have to put these huge numbers in here just to toy with this because it's it's an arbitrary number like what does a thousand actually mean i know it's supposed to be newtons but what does it do they don't exactly give you a lot of information i don't want to be doing a physics class here just to get my bullets to fire um, and then of course you tell the the object to destroy it for a certain amount of time you don't want bullets going forever so uh yeah let's actually remove the text here i don't need the full thing it was originally set to two seconds and then I changed it so that's an actual variable. So we get a variable for that, we get firing force, reload time, which is set to 20 seconds by default. And then uh, reload timer, which tracks it. Very simple stuff, same stuff I use for my weapons in Minecraft. Uh, aim at mouse code is pretty straightforward. Uh, I mix this up between a few different tutorials, but it's, it is the same stuff we use in Minecraft as well. You figure out what direction you're aiming at, so you figure out, okay, where's my mouse at? Where's my person at? Then you figure out the direction from that. In Minecraft, we do the same thing, and except in Minecraft, you would use the aiming vector that's already pre-generated by Minecraft, um, and then just extend that if you really want to. And then we turn that into an angle, so we know what angle to rotate towards. So we turn that into a quaternion. I don't think I need to do this one. The only reason I'm doing this one is because the transform rotation is a quaternion. 
So I just went ahead and used one as well. And then uh, you lerp towards it so that way you have a slower movement and the uh, movement will go with delta time. So that way if your frame rate goes up and down, it still looks like it's rendering at the same rate. Although I think our frame rate is ridiculously high. So I don't think we really need to worry about that. So all that code's pretty straightforward. And then of course, well, I'm gonna be working on damage data, which I'll show you in the next um, game uh, video maybe. Uh, for our damage, we're going to do in Hall, Armor, and Shield is what we're actually going to end up doing. And then those will have different behaviors for different weapons. And of course, it will have damage stats as well. So some vehicles will be more resistant against certain types of weapon types. Uh, but we're not worried about that because that's something that's going to take a while to actually implement. Let's get back to the actual game itself and show up the bullets being fired. So we got the tank. It rotates pretty well. It's actually pretty smooth. And this will rotate with a vehicle. So it's not too hard to use. Um, it's got a bit of rotation delay to it. Um, and I think we need to work on maybe some a little bit of intelligent AI behavior to for it to as well. Uh, the poles, by the way, have colliders on them, but the uh, ceiling parts don't. The colliders are really nice on these two. They're actually perfectly sized of the poles. And we got that. And apparently the turret is on the wrong layer. <laughs> Fun parts about being game developer, you forget to do things. Uh, of course, my targets are on the wrong layer too, so we can't shoot the targets. But uh, we got a machine gun. So we can fire the machine gun. Pretty, pretty simple machine gun. So that does fire pretty smooth. Uh, we can increase, decrease the rate. It's got a, basically the distance of the weapon is being purely defined by the amount of time. And then we got a cannon. It's a really, really simple. Did not take long to do this. I spent, I think, more time watching YouTube. And of course, there is some problems with it. You notice how, uh, as I move, the bullets look like they're coming out sideways. That is like, I, I can't tell if that is due to the turret rotation or the bullet point not rotating or the fact that the bullet fired before the turret rotated. Kind of a little funny. It's something that you really, really wouldn't notice too much. Especially if I increase the velocity of the bullets. Let's actually do that too. Do the machine gun, gun, do, do, do. Say we set the velocity to like 1200. See, it's less noticeable once you get up, you get up to that point, because then the bullets are basically whipping out of the gun. I may move the spawn point in front of the gun cannon too, just because it would. Uh, would look a little bit better because it's coming out of from behind the barrel so that way when we get the rotation going and you notice it a lot quicker and of course the main cannon reloads in 20 seconds we definitely need to find a better reload time for that i haven't messed with it at all i'm thinking say like two seconds is probably a better reload time see how long it takes to reload two seconds even feels about too long there's a one second It might even be too long. There it goes. I think maybe the timer had to like roll over. Yeah, the timer has to roll over because our, our reload timer is not an increment system, it's a decrement system. Um, so that way it has to actually decrease down. So that's not bad. Firing about that rate feels okay-ish. I feel like it needs to fire even faster though. Uh, yeah, that'll work. It's not the fastest thing, but I do plan to put upgrades on this, so I don't want every weapon to fire fast right off the get-go. Because this is going to be the starter tank the player will get. He'll get a quad barrel uh, machine gun based tank. And then there'll be some other weapons that we will end up getting. And then I'm going to definitely do the damage math. I'm going to have to make sure when I do the damage math that velocity is taken into account. Because you can see the, when they hit things. Like if the bullet hits a pole or something like that, let's see if I can actually aim with the pole. It just rolls off the ground. I kind of want that mechanic to stay there because that actually looks kind of cool. But I want to make sure that you're not taking full damage if you actually get hit by a ball rolling on the ground. Anyways, I'll leave you guys here and I'll come back later. And uh, for those who will ask, I will be planning on working on the mods as well while I'm doing this. It's just I need to work on this primarily because this is going to probably end up actually paying the bills in the future. That way I can keep modding for free. Anyways, I'll see you guys later.